All right, so this is going to be a uh, comprehensive video on how to sell your own car, okay? Uh, before we even get into all of that, I just want to crunch some numbers here for you to encourage you as to why you want to do this. So in my case, uh, a car might be worth about 10000 my used car, because uh, we have seen an seen a increase. This might change within the next month or two. Uh, I can sell it to CarMax uh, for uh, 6600 That's a net difference of 3400 Divide that by 10, that's 340 hours of work. Uh, divide that by 8 hours, that's 42 days of work uh, to uh, basically not sell my own car if I gave it to uh, CarMax. You can, you can do that uh, if that's what you want for convenience or you're scared or whatever. I say, uh, you know, get over your... Um, your emotions and, uh, and, and go ahead and uh, work through it and I'm going to teach you how to do it. Um, so the first thing that uh, we've got to get into is, um, um, well, the very first thing you're going to do before you even consider anything else is detail the hell out of the car. Okay, I mean six coats of wax, vacuum from front to back, everything you own out of the car, make sure the wheel well's done, make sure you take the spare out, clean it, you know, Vaseline the bolt, you know, paint over any rust down in the wheel well. I mean, everything you can do to make that car tip, 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 top shape. Clean the, and then don't give them any excuses. Clean the air filter, okay? I, you know, I change the oil. And the place that I'm selling the car at, uh, they'll, they'll verify the fact that I changed the oil. And plus, I got paperwork for it. So, you know, you know, buyer, when they come in, uh, number one, they're looking for things to, to, basically nitpick yawn. So if you got a busted windshield wiper, oh, you need to give me $100 off for that windshield wiper. Well, that's a $14 windshield wiper. I'm not giving you $100 off. Oh, we're going to walk now. I'm, I'm the all-powerful buyer. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, you know. But if you just fix the, the uh, windshield wiper ahead of time, same with the cleaning the air filter, just simple, simple stuff. You know, Clean those tires. Make sure the rims look really nice. Put a little tire black on those tires. You know, make them shiny. Um, you know, there's, and, and what are you going to spend? Probably 30, 40 bucks, you know, the car wax and everything. Um, you know, okay, enough on that. So, you know, to detail the hell out of the car, make it look nice. And by the way, wax the windows, for example, you know, because you want them windshield wipers to just glide back and forth. You don't want the windshield wiper going, you know, yeah, okay. Um, so, if you wax it, that fills in all those little grooves on the windshield. Just little tidbits about detail in the car. All the bug juice, get it off the front of the car. Make sure all that's gone. Uh, that might take a little elbow grease depending on how well you've kept maintained your car. Let's get into the paperwork real quick. That's uh, the, the number one thing. Um, if you're going to sell your car, got to have a clear title. Okay? Uh, now, if you got to borrow from a relative or do whatever you got to do, uh, you know, or even even put it on a credit card, and I don't recommend that. But I mean, you got to have a clear title because if once you sell that vehicle, you can pay them back. You know, I mean, now if I'm a relative, you better be somebody trustworthy before I'm going to lend you money. That's that's a recipe for disaster. And and by the way, you better give that relative in writing something that uh, that they want to take you to court. They're going to get their money back. Okay, and, and then the relative, that makes them feel good, that makes you feel good. Uh, and if they're stupid enough to loan you the money without any paperwork, then so be it. You just rip them off. But, I, you know, I, I don't think that's right, and I don't think you should do it. I think as soon as you sell the vehicle, you pay it back. And that's why the credit card, that's all on you. You know, you got to pay that credit card back. And, uh, yeah, it might. how long is it going to take to sell the car? It depends on how reasonable you are. You know, are you going to come down on your price and, and get it into a place where it's going to sell? Uh, we'll talk about that. All right, so let's look at the buyer's paperwork and what they're going to need. Um, they're going to want to bring an application for new title and new registration. And as a seller, you're going to sign that. And uh, what, is, what is needed, this, this is needed by the DMV. Do you have to have it? No. As long as they got a signed title, they don't really need this. But, but it's good to have. And I, I encourage all buyers to bring this. You can print the form off online. Just say application for new title and new registration. And on that form will be the year, the make, the model, the color, the odometer reading. Uh, and it'll also record the seller's and buyer's contact information so that the, everything's there in case they need it. Uh, another thing is a lot of states, uh, after 10 years, um, you have to do a, what's called a verification of the odometer um, to, to make sure that it hasn't been rolled back. Uh, I say 10 years. It can vary from state to state. Uh, 
Um, so if you, you know, yeah, and, and if your car's old, like mine's nine years old, I might, uh, I'll probably get that verification just so that the buyer feels good and they know that that odometer reading uh, is good. Uh, now, since I'm doing a Carfax uh, report, I don't really think, I think that suffices as my odometer um, a verification, but uh, who knows, they may want it and I got no problem giving that. And, and, and it, it is good to have everything up front. Second thing the buyer wants to do, um, is uh, have a vehicle transit permit um, because if they're not going to get to get in the, uh, the to get to the DMV within five days, um, that can expire. And then if they, if something happens uh, uh, to the car or whatever uh, before you know after that five days, uh, they're going to be in trouble, right? Because they don't have tags on the car. Because you, as the seller, you're going to take your damn tags off the car. Don't let the buyer drive away with your tags, all right? So be sure and get them off. But the buyer has five days of leniency with no tags to drive that car around. If he gets pulled over, he can say, here's the title. Here's the date on the title. I'm, I'm going to be going to the DMV tomorrow or the next day and get it done. But if it's over five days, the cop's going to say, man, it's been five days and you're driving around with no tags. Here's your ticket, buddy. Okay, uh, the next thing is the buyer's going to need uh, proof of insurance. Uh, that's on them. That has nothing to do with you. Uh, and then, of course, the buyer's going to need to bring money for the, uh, the transfer fee. That's mild. But the sales tax, sales tax, oh, my God. To me, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong because as the, as the new car owner, I paid that sales tax. And I'm selling it to a buyer. So why does my buyer have to pay sales tax on something that I already paid sales tax for? That's just a libertarian in me. Um, you know, are you going to put the full amount you charge the buyer on the title? I'm not saying one way or the other, but you might help you sell the car. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Okay, um, so um, the seller. Okay, the seller's paperwork... Uh, Number one uh, that I would bring, uh, you can search online, and uh, the ones I found, for whatever reason, they don't have a witness signature, uh, and maybe I'll just keep looking, but you want an as-is bill of sale, okay? Not just the bill, you can do a bill, you could do two different ones. You could do an as-is uh, bill of sale and then a bill of sale, or you could do what's called a combination, which I just do because, you know, you don't want the buyer having to sign too many darn things, but it's called an as-is bill of sale. And uh, so you're going to put your signature on there. The buyer's going to put their signature. And then I would always put a witness signature, which is the third party that we're going to talk about that you're going to want involved in the transaction um, to, to keep you safe, make sure everybody's on the up and up. Um, another thing as the seller, uh, you may want to do a vehicle transfer notification. Um, have I ever done it? No, I just never really thought about it. But, you know, I, I, you know here I am thinking about it. I mean, if, if the buyer doesn't go and do his paperwork and then he goes out and gets a bunch of tickets and everything, as far as DMV knows, you still have the car. It's, it's never been taken out of your name. They haven't seen the title. The buyer has the title, right? So you want to go in right after you sell it. And, and yeah, it might take an hour or two or three, depending on where you are, and go to the DMV and do a vehicle transfer notification to make sure that they're aware that you no longer own the car. And that that's why that... Uh, that buyer piece of paper, whether they brought it or not, the title and new registration, uh, the application for new title, you know, I'd have a cop, I'd get a copy of that or at least have the buyer's contact information so that you can do the transfer notification because I imagine they're going to want the buyer's information on that. Um, so the, uh, we already talked, we already crunched the number. So that's really, uh, that's really it for the paperwork. Um, Let's talk about the transaction itself. Uh, you know, a lot of times I hear online that you're going to go to a neutral place. Uh, a police station, for example, would be my ideal choice. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, if, if, if they want to carjack you at a police station, which uh, they can probably do in Portland <laughs> or Chicago or, uh, uh, or any of these woke cities where the uh, police won't arrest anybody, but, uh, but normally, you know, if you're in Florida or a Republican state, uh, I'd say that you could do a, uh, be a feel pretty safe at a police station. And then if they try to, to carjack you, then, yeah, maybe you could get the police involved pretty quick. Um, but uh, what I always do is um, I always get a third party. Uh, so here's an example. 
uh, I have a local garage that I deal with uh, for all my maintenance. Um, and that's, you know, that's one thing when you move to a new area or whether you, where, where you live, you know, maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a friend's recommendation or whatever. But, you know, if you've got a car and you're going to keep it, you know, if it's not a lease and you're not turning it over every three years or, or you're not buying a new car every couple of years, you know, like me, I buy a car, I keep it 10 years, you know, I mean, that, this car is 10 years old that I'm selling. Um, because, you know, that's how you get your money's worth out of the car. Take good care of it. You know, take care of your things and your things will take care of you, right? Um, so, um, I go to, so I'm going to put my car down at the, uh, at the, the maintenance shop and they're going to sell it for me. And is it going to cost me some money? Sure. I'm going to give them, you know, 200, 250 bucks. Uh, the advantage is, is that now, uh, you know, Joe Schmo, uh, he wants to look at the car um, I just give them the address of, uh, you know, so-and-so's garage. I won't give the name of it. Uh, and, uh, and so all they got to do is drive to so-and-so's garage between the hours of eight and five when they're open. And, uh, Joe, Schmo, Joe Schmo's garage, he'll come out, he'll give them the keys to, to my car. Uh, and, uh, he'll take their license and their car keys and then they can go out and test drive the car. Now, is that dangerous? Yeah, somewhat. I mean, you get some redneck who wants to bust your car and see if it's going to do 120 miles an hour. <laughs> you know, there's no way to stop that. You got to let somebody test drive the damn car. And, uh, and since it is parked at a garage, that's why I like you doing it with a garage. You know, if they want to trust, because, you know, Clifford's, I got all my paperwork uh, of all the, the things, and they can talk about the maintenance that they've done on the vehicle. And, and if they want to use uh, the garage to do to, to, uh, um, an inspection of it right there on the spot, they could, or they can take it to their own garage. You know, uh, that's what I do. If I've got a favorite mechanic, I'd always run a used car over there and just let them give it a quick look over and give them 20 bucks or whatever just to make sure i mean if i'm pretty sure i'm going to buy the vehicle you know at the price that it's offered uh, of course your third party can't negotiate the price but what they'll do is you know you always keep your phone uh you know tethered to you when you're selling a vehicle and uh you know the garage will call you and say hey man i got a guy here i he says the tires are somewhat bald, so he wants four hundred dollars off the price. Are you willing to sell it for thus and such? You know, in my case, ten thousand. Let's say nine thousand six hundred. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Tell him, tell him, good to go. Now, how are you going to accept payment? Okay, uh, you know the obvious stuff. You're not going to take a cashier's check. You're not. Gonna, you're not going to take anything but cash. Okay, or you can. Here's another alternative, and sometimes people want to do this, is you get in the car, you're driving, okay, and they, they want to go to their bank or their credit union, and you sit down together with, with you know, the, the, the person there, the, I want to say teller, but it's not a teller, it's the person behind the desk, and they cut you a cashier's check right there at the bank. Now, I trust that. You know, because you're at the bank, <laughs> you're getting the cashier's check from the bank. I mean, if it's forged at that point, you're just screwed. You know, maybe maybe they put up a whole bank so that they could uh, steal your car. You know, no, I don't think so. Uh, and, you know, here's another one for you. Um, and I just printed this off uh, because, you know, there is a lot of counterfeit currency out there. So, yeah, you take cash at the place. How do you know it's not counterfeit? Right. Um, and, and, and well, let, let's get back to the car, letting them test drive it and everything. Let's say they do steal the car and the keys they gave were bogus and they, they had a forged uh, driver's license. Which you can't cover every damn base, people. OK, so they stole your car. Well, you don't sell the car unless you've got insurance to cover theft. So the car is insured. I'm going to get the money from the insurance company because somebody stole my car. And of course, I would just report it to the police. Hey, they stole my car. You know, so and you're covered there. OK, so, yeah, they steal your car. If they wreck it, you're still covered under your insurance. Hopefully they won't do something like that. But you never know. Um, but here's here's just some 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 things to, to think about. And you can go to WikiHow online uh, and just some quick checks on the money that they're giving you just to see if it's counterfeit. Uh, a simple one is look at the serial numbers, for example. Uh, if the bill is a series 209A. 2009A, which means after 2009, uh, the serial numbers start with an L. 
Now, would a counterfeiter be stupid enough to, <laughs> to not start their serial number with an L? I don't know. That's the number one thing that they list to check. And boy, you could just look at that serial number and say, okay, this is a $2,100 bill, which more than likely it's going to be you know, much later than that. Does it start with an L? So that would be one. Um, here's an easy one. The, the new $100 bills, because they're usually going to pay in hundreds, uh, uses a raised printing on Ben Franklin's shoulder. Okay, so you run your fingers over the spot on Ben Franklin's shoulder, and, uh, and you should be able to feel uh, a texture, okay? Have I ever done that? No, but I mean, it, it, these are just simple little things that you could check, you know. Um, check for the color change ink. There is a large, I didn't even know this until I looked at a $100 bill. There's a large copper colored ink well to the left of the bill's serial number, and inside the ink well, is a, is a bell, which should change in color from copper to green as you look at the bell from different angles. Good to know, right? So you take that $100 bill and you look at that, that copper color and see if it changes color. See, these are the things that they're doing uh, to make sure that you, you're, the currency's not counterfeit. You know, you always go to the store and they take that little ink pen. And you, you know, and also your third party, you know, be in a garage, I bet that... Uh, my my garage they've probably uh, people have tried to pass some counterfeit bills and they might even have their own way of checking the uh the hundred dollars bills themselves you know maybe one of them little the ink pens that they use uh it just seems to me that i would take these added precautions and here's another one and i'll just there's a bunch more but i'm just gonna go doing the top four and then you can read the rest uh but this is another easy one hold the bill up to the light an embedded thread runs just to the left of franklin's portrait the letters USA and the number 100 alternate, alternate along the strip, which is visible from both sides of the note. Uh, okay, that's maybe that's not the one that I was thinking of. This might be it. Oh, check the blue security ribbon. Just to the right of Ben Franklin's portrait is a blue security ribbon. The ribbon is 3D. This is the one I was thinking of. Never mind. that You can do them before. I don't know why that's listed number four. That sounds pretty hard to me. Um, just to the right of Franklin's portrait is a blue security ribbon. The ribbon is 3D. Move the bill back and forth. Check that you see the number 100 and the tiny bells move from side to side as you move the bill. Pretty cool, huh? So what you might want to do um, before you even take the cash for the vehicle is go to the bank. Get you a, a nice modern uh, $100 bill and perform some of these steps and make sure you're comfortable with doing it just to make sure that you, you kind of know how to look at a $100 bill and see if it's counterfeit or not, right? Common sense. Because you're not going to take anything but cash. Or go to the bank. I mean, I think going to the bank might even be a better option in my opinion, but that's, you know, that's up to you. It is a pain in the ass riding with them to their bank depending on how far away it is. But I thought this was pretty cool. The blue ribbon... Uh, is peeling off the bill and then okay um okay and the tiny bells move from side to side as you move the bill this ribbon is woven into the paper okay not pasted on so uh, accordingly if the blue ribbon is peel <laughs> peeling off the bill then you then you have a fake so but you know it sounds obvious but you know what you know if you just don't know any of these things you might even take a bill like that so, you know, look for the watermark portrait, use a magnifying glass, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. There's, there's like a whole bunch of things that you can look at to figure out if it's counterfeit. I would just pick maybe four or five and uh, get through them. Um, let's get into other things to make the buyer feel A-OK. -okay. Uh, on my computer, I keep uh, all maintenance that I do on the vehicle and when I do it. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's just go through a few things and, and I'll, you know, because I've got it all documented, I can talk to the buyer about it. And of course, I put a lot of this stuff in the advertisement and in the advertisement for the car, I put the paperwork that they should bring with them. Just a brief summary, say, be sure to bring this and bring that so that, you know, when they show up, you know, they've got everything. Yeah, and I also talk about it clear, I, you know, be sure and put the word clear title in your advertisement. That's that's they ain't coming unless you got that. But, uh, you know, so here's some things I have had to do to my car. A automatic transition shifter temperature sensors replaced, and then I got the cost of that and how much, and then when they were changed out. Uh, just showing you some maintenance done. A uh, brand new starter was installed uh, for $550 in 2019. 
Um, I've cleaned the KNN high performance filter once a year and then I've got the date and when I last did it, which was recently. Um, uh, I got less than three year old uh, 70,000 mile Bridgestone tires. Uh, you know, on the car, I, when was my last alignment? When did I last rotate them? Uh, the battery, what's the battery in it? I got an Odyssey Extreme Power Battery, uh, which was an expensive battery, but that's from 2016, so hey, there's something. But I'm going to be honest with them. They might want to say, hey, it might be needing a new battery soon. Well, it, right now it's starting just fine. So, But yeah, if you want to take, uh, you know, um, $50 off the price for a new battery, sure, go ahead, because it only costs 200 and 19 at the time of course with inflation it's probably more now um, uh, sin I use synthetic oil you might want to point that out I change it every 5,000 miles now how do they know that I got the maintenance record from um, from the uh, place uh, you know the, the garage that I took it to now I only have a three-year relationship with them I got the car as a hand-me-down from my father so I can't attest to when my dad changed it or what oil he used and I'll just tell him that uh, but at least they know that it's been been correct. Um, so uh, uh, let's see. And then of course, in your advertisements, you're going to put all the specs. You know the the 16 inch alloy wheels, the 2.4 injection. You know, make sure you got all of your details in the advertisement. Um, you know, see so here's a regular. I know that I keep a regular maintenance record. I put some Royal Purple Max Clean Fuel stuff in there. Lucas gas treatment, sea foam. Uh, you know, by the way, a lot of this this gas treatment, uh, what I'm finding is it's not really worth the money. But you know, maybe once a year you might want to throw something in there. Uh, then of course I list the uh, the oil that I use, um, the synthetic. Um, uh, and then, of course, I also look, list the torque of the drain plug. I was torqued the drain when I when I was changing the oil, but I trust it. But the garage, I I just take the oil there, and it, it was ten dollars up in Michigan. I mean, why are you going to change your own oil? Why are you going to crawl underneath the car and get dirty, man? Just take it to the garage and let them do it. They're charging me twenty bucks, uh, even though I'm providing my own oil. Uh, but they got to dispose of it. And here in Florida, I guess the disposal fees can get kind of pricey. Um, you know, when did it, when were the wiper blades last changed? Uh, you know, when did you do your power, your steering fluid? When was that changed? Uh, uh, like the air filter. Uh, I always even list, I, sil I silicon spray the engine, the doors, uh, the slide and the trunk. Um, when was it last washed? Well, of course, washed, waxed and washed. You know, that's obviously right before you sold it, you know, so... Uh, and then, of course, you got the big maintenance, like when was the brake fluid last changed? When was the radiator flushed? Uh, now, you know, and so when you're hitting the buyer with all of these different things, man, they're looking at you like, damn, this guy is really taking care of this car, and he's got all the info right here. Whether they believe you or not, they might think you're lying your ass off. But, man, I tell you what, I went through a hell of a lot of work to lie my ass off, didn't I? Now, some people might, but, I mean, you know, I got all of this. This is just for my own uh, record because a lot of times I go in and say, when was the last time I changed the, uh, the oil on the car? Now, they put the little sticker up in the window because I do it at the garage, but I mean, at the same time, I keep it in here also. Uh, and then, of course, uh, when were the, the disc brakes uh, last changed? Uh, you know, so there you go. That's how you sell your own car and do it the right way. Uh, you know, it's up to you. Meet them at a neutral location. I, I, I can't see it. I, you know, I've just had too much difficulty, you know, because they, they're working a regular job and I can meet you at five o'clock on Thursday and then it's pouring down rain and you say, well, do you still want to meet? Well, no, we better not. You know, I don't want to get soaked. Uh, let's postpone till next week. Uh, well, you know, in the meantime, I got two other people that are going to look at it. And, well, you know, uh, we'll just have to let them look at it. For, you know, now get your third party. Just park it there and let them. Uh, they got a business. You know, they're running a business. It could be Z-Bart. I use Z-Bart up in Michigan. Uh, it could be Family Dollar if you know somebody. I mean, it could be anywhere. Just a business that's open all day. They're going to be there all day anyway. And you're going to pay them money to sell your car for you. And all they got to do is basically when the people come in, they show them, you know, I, I give them this folder. Um, what's in here? This is a record of all the receipts of everything that I've done for the car, the alignments, um, 
you know. So they're not just taking my word for it on this piece of paper. Of course, the, I got the title in here. I would take the title home. I wouldn't leave it with the third party. I got the information about the battery from when I bought that. You know, everything's in here. <coughs> so they can see the, the maintenance record on the, on the car, and that's what you do with any car when you buy it. Um, the next uh, series of videos is going to be um, uh, buying a new car. And because uh, uh, I, I don't buy used cars, uh, I just don't trust people unless I knew the person. Like I got my car, I would have bought it from my father, of course, because I know he takes care of his car. Or if you got a good friend, maybe. But to just go out and buy a car, um, I, well, I buy it for me. I got all the paperwork. Most people don't. Um, so anyway. That's it uh, for, for selling your own car. I know the video got a little long, but uh, I just wanted to hit on everything you want to think about because uh, I haven't seen any good videos that talk about everything. Uh, and uh, that'll be it. And when we get into the new car, we'll talk about the color of the car, the things you want to be thinking about, uh, you know, the green new deal. There you go. All right, guys. Peace out.